Hi, this week Dana is under the weather, so we're going to give her a break for editing, and we're going to share a Patreon episode. What's the 411? The Hunted. Before listening to the episode, please listen in to this promo from our friends. Coming to October Pod Home Video, it's the Phantom of the Viceroy Drive In. 138 living nightmares crawl out of your phone or streaming device and into your lap. It's the Phantom of the Viceroy Drive In with special guest stars Lady Vengeance, Carissa Vickis, JT Hosack, and Keeley, host of Misty Mysteries. Do you have the nerve to watch alone? Better see it with your sweetheart, but they'd have to be a master of kung fu to protect you from the Phantom. What is the Phantom's dark secret? Why does he leave a single red rose on the bodies of his victims? What unholy, satanic rituals does he conduct deep in the darkness of Hangman's Grove? Find out the answers to these questions and more when you see the Phantom of the Viceroy Drive-In. Coming Tuesday, April 25th to October Pod Home Video, only on YouTube. Find October Pod on the World Wide Web at OctoberPodVHS.com. Retro horror for bold individualists. Warning, the following podcast may occasionally contain strong language and material that is not suitable for all ages. If you are easily offended, it is highly advised that you turn back now. However, if you're a degenerate, welcome to the you shall be home. Thanks for supporting us on Patreon. Welcome to our monthly critique. We're finally getting to the monthly uh, critiques that we owe y'all. So here's the first one of three. So um, we watched the documentary Missing 411, The Hunters, I want to say. That's what it, the full title is. I thought is. it was called The Hunted. The Hunted. We're going to go with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on memory. Missing 411 was the easiest part for me to remember. Right. So, Nydia, you have notes. Uh, so, I'm going to let you take over from here. Okay. So, I really enjoyed this documentary. Um, it was thorough and in depth. And um, it was something that Dana had discussed before. She was something that she wanted to, mm -hmm. to cover. It was something that I had in my notes to cover for a story. Um, so basically, I'll get into it. Steve, uh, I think his name was Pilatus. Steve Pilatus. Yeah, I think okay. so. Steve Pilatus, he's a detective. David, wasn't it David? I think it's Steve. Okay. We'll go with that. Somebody look, somebody look it up. I'm looking it up right now. Go ahead. Just keep going. I'll let you know. So, okay. So he's a writer. He was a, a retired detective, uh, now a writer and a host of this missing 411 series. Um, it's a series of documentaries, I believe. Um, so we're in this, uh, the hunted, he's discussing the vanishing of experienced hunters in a pattern and in the same areas. So these are like small areas throughout the country um, where a concentration of experienced outdoorsmen and women um, have turned up missing. And uh, the FBI, he goes on and he says, and something that I was like, wait a minute, what? I had like a little bit of a Mandela effect. Dana, you were going to say something? It is David. It's David. Why yeah. did I think Steve? You got the last name right though. Okay. Um, so he said the FBI doesn't investigate missing adults. Yeah, I think that was so strange because I was literally listening right before I watched this documentary. I was listening to um, My Favorite Murder uh -huh. and they were covering almost something like, like this case. And they were saying that because... Of course, their information isn't always necessarily accurate, but they were said she was covering a case where a woman was murdered in um, she went missing in 
like a state park. And because it was a national park that the FBI was involved, they couldn't use the local like authorities because it was like a, I don't know, conflict of interest or something. So like, I thought that was odd that the show said that, but I was like, of course my favorite murder gets a lot wrong anyway. So I'm like, you know, who knows, but I- Oh, I, I wanna that, find out though. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was strange because since when don't they like- I know they have a whole missing persons thing, but I thought it had to do with, I thought it was everyone, but it sounds, he made it sound like it was just children. Young yeah. children yeah mm -hmm. yeah i was like wait a minute that can't be right anyway I, I, this whole thing is another reason to hate camping just I, I was like you guys picked this on purpose to be annoying <laughs> 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 i literally thought that i was like you guys totally picked this on purpose i thought you and i thought you picked this i didn't pick this no cindy, uh, cindy told us to do it and we did show i ordered y'all to do it because i had to get y'all on board okay well listen i'm i don't hate it yeah. so so it starts off with tom messick and he was an elderly man who used to be um a military man and he was an outdoorsman he used to give the hunting training for people to get their hunters hunting license and he was now in his 80s and he's basically blind and deaf yeah he had like shot himself in the eye or something like something happened to his eye and he like lost an eye gunpowder exploded in his face right. and yeah. yeah so i mean and he was also in his 80s and blind and deaf right so right. and all the hunters basically that went up to the camp with him were all in their 80s which like sir yeah i mean it was a large group and there were younger people amongst them but the yeah, watchers the people on the trail watching and leading the the deer guiding the deer towards the hunters down the road were all in their 80s yeah. all right so go ahead dana your mic is off my mic is off yeah it's out of place so no, we can't hear, hear you can you hear me now yeah i can hear you now uh i think that's I think if they're going to have a job, it should be guiding the deer towards the people shooting and not being the people shooting, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially when they're blind and not, like, I don't think it was blind, blind, but like hard of see, sight, hard of hearing, like, yeah. I think, sir, maybe you sit this one out, you know? exactly exactly so i have a theory about him but before i have before I, I share my theory um he goes missing tom um goes missing and the search was insanely thorough right i mean they did like a and it was so so weird because they did like the string pattern through the through the forest and they had hundreds of volunteers going out there and they everywhere they searched like they did like a grid a search grid and they tied their string between trees and they made sure that they doubled back and double checked and triple checked some areas and he was never found but not only was he never found none of his equipment was found nothing zero evidence of him and the dogs that they brought out there stopped picked up the scent up until the spot that he was standing and then they picked up no more scent and, and i don't know that like you've even really like reiterated the point that these are like people who hunt their whole lives experienced experienced woodsmen experienced campers experienced hikers you know trainers of like the younger generation like these are people who know these woods who know their way around guns who know their like this is the, the land they grew up on like mm -hmm. this is not a like they probably go into the woods without an inkling of nerves or hesitation or any type of reservation about their safety you know and for him to just vanish is he was like poof yeah um, with with a ton of other people around right yeah because they went up seven in a group the three old guys had their each one had picked a location to sit at and wait while the other four sent the deer their way supposedly right 
that was the goal yeah and poof they were he was gone Right. So one of the men that were uh, in the hunt- hunting group uh, who was very close to Tom Messick, um, they even uh, vacationed together and um, and brought their kids, you know, along in their campers. And, you know, they, they were close their whole lives. Um, he said that he heard a strange sound coming from the woods and something that sounded out of place for the normal woodland sounds that you would hear. And he said that it sounded like a big trap closing. And I th- I thought that was interesting, like a big trap door closing or something. Yeah. And and as the documentary goes on and we'll talk about it like the way they describe this sound, like they all have this like weird description of what the sound sounds like, you know. If it's the same sound. If it's, if it's right, of course. I mean, the way the documentary is set up, it would lead you to believe that like something is happening across the country, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, but yeah. Like, and I thought, and again, we'll get into all that later, but like I did think it was very interesting when they like lined everything up. It was like, you know, they get separated. The, there's a, a, a weird weather abnormality. There's something wrong with them medically. There's a weird sound. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah, I, and I'm going to expand on that in a minute. Yeah. But, um, they searched for Tom for 10 days. And then they stopped the search because of something else big that happened. But um, what do you, what's your theory on Tom's disappearance? What do you think happened? I mean, the one thing about this documentary is I don't really feel like I have any answers to any of their disappearances. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What about you? For a quick while, I was thinking this is a hunting accident gone wrong and they're just hiding the body. But also, there's no evidence of any foul play. Like, there's no blood. There's no track. Like, had there been some kind of, you know. You you can't have that many people involved in a crime and that shit not, even if it was an accident. Even if it was an accident. Like, I will misquote Ben Franklin again. (laughs) That's what I was thinking of. You know, like there's just no way. Like, and then for the dogs not to, I know Wait, that's not like an exact. What was, what was Ben Franklin's? I don't know. Like, like if, if two or more people have a secret, oh. only something. If only yeah. two of them are dead or something. <laughs> I'll never know. I'll never if know two that. people have a secret, True. the secret say, basically stays a secret if one of them is dead. Mm-hmm. That's all I think just move your mic closer to the center because you keep covering it i i I just get muffled shit (laughs) we want to hear you call me a bitch clearly and it's not happening it's still not happening what what the fuck (laughs) yeah your computer's not working can you hear me now no No. what the fuck well i mean we hear you but it's all like Can you hear me now? A little better. I don't think your mic is being, I think your computer's picking up. Okay. All right. Well, I unplugged it. Yeah. Now I hear you. Great. Okay, great. All right. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's better. Thank you. If if you got to say, I want to, I want the full. So the thing that happened that called off the search. um, Oh, also, and and I want to say that Tom Messick, um, when he was missing, even though the FBI, the reason why I brought up the FBI, the FBI is that even though the FBI doesn't investigate missing adults in this park system, I don't know, but he said that even though they don't, they were in, they were um, investigating his disappearance, right? Which was, which was, well, why are they investigating this? You know, why are they taking copious notes on, you know? on how this man went missing or whatever, you know? So the reason why they called off the the search is because another man 
So this was 10 days after Tom Messick goes missing. Another man by the name of Fred Drum goes missing 40 miles south of where Tom went missing. Right. And he goes missing from his house on Thanksgiving day. So he's surrounded by woods, you know, his whole house, he's in a very rural area and his whole house is surrounded by, I guess, essentially in essence, the same woods that um, Tom uh, Messick went missing in, you know what I mean? Part of that same forest or whatever. Yeah. Mile south. So um, his wife comes home and he's gone. No sign of him no nothing he's just disappeared and he was also an elderly outdoorsman never to be found he was never found again right neither was tom nothing no, neither one. and nothing nothing none of their equipment none of nothing tracked for them right. right which is a little different from the ones that we will come up to next yeah. right so you know the in, in his investigation and observation of these missing people, of these pockets of, of missing people, there's a pattern. So there's a point of separation uh, from which the person separates from their group. Um, mm -hmm. The disappearance happens near bodies of water. So if, you know, they're, they're near a creek, they're near a river, a lake, whatever, um, there's often a uh, rock fields in the area granite fields you name it you know rock fields boulders um around the same time of day so between uh afternoon and dusk that's when these people disappear um say again mm -hmm. so that's in, that's interesting like the, the fact that it's always like a similar time of day is very interesting to me mm -hmm. yeah well see because like I'm assuming that if you're on a hike, that's usually when you're taking the, that's the active part of the hike. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like prior to that, you'd be at the encampment or you would be arriving to the place and dusk by dusk, you've settled into your camp and you're not continuing to hike. You know right. You're going to, you're going to be taking it down for the night. Exactly. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So you're not yeah. no longer moving. Um, there's a weather incident at or around the time of the disappearance, um, be it a storm, fog, whatever, some type of illness or disability regarding the missing person. So whether it's a physical disability or a mental disability, the missing person is usually disabled in some kind of way. Um, and dogs, the, the scent dogs lose the scent for some odd reason they just can't pick up the scent um and if they're found they're found in an area that was previously searched often naked uh-huh yeah that's crazy yeah and um the coroner can rarely determine the cause of death and they happen in geographical clusters yeah so like I don't know a lot about um, canine search and rescue, like dogs, like sniffing, whatever. I don't know a lot about it. And I, I wonder at this point, like um, how accurate or like, is it like a bunk science also? Like I know dogs are like very fucking smart and like good at shit, but like, is that a thing that we really like rely on anymore? You know? They well, know. let me go ahead Cindy I mean they do they definitely rely on it and it has been proven to work but mm -hmm. it depends on the time frame in which the dogs go out there so if they're waiting a long time if there's been a weather event that can wash away some of that scent that may be left behind mm -hmm. and thus create a problem so a lot of times the dogs may not be brought out as eat as quickly as they really need to be brought out to really connect with the possible scent that may be left in that area right right so i have um explanation for all of these things right so the the person becomes separated from the group that's a given right yeah. They become separated and um, the, the disappearance is happening near water. Um, you know, sometimes when you become separated, if you get too hot, you want a drink of water, you're usually not prepared because you've separated yourself from the camp 
and you probably don't have water. So you're probably going to a water source to see the flow of the of the river, you know, to follow it or whatever, to follow the body of water to see if you can get out to, you know, out of the, the forest unlost, right? So maybe they slip trying to cross a river or something and they fall into the waters, you know? Um, the rock fields, you know, people missing around rock fields. Well, how many times have you misstepped a mossy rock and fallen and hit, and hit yourself, you know? How many times or, have you misstepped on a mossy rock, Nidia? I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever even seen a mossy rock? <laughs> yeah, in Puerto Rico all the time. Okay, all right. And I end up um, and falling on my ass. My, my argument, my, my point counterpoint would be, why is there no evidence then? Like at the why very least, no evidence then. at right. the very least, their equipment would be found, something. Their scent, their blood, like DNA, like the way that they searched for that first guy and, and a lot of them tom messick but but tom messick specifically the way they searched for him was so fucking thorough and for days for days yeah. and days and days it would be very odd that if he slipped into the water or fell into a rock quarry that there would be no sign of him nothing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that being said i watched a tiktok today of uh um of a of an examiner you know um one of those examiners and she said the best way to hide a body is to put it in a moving body body of water why because it drags it away from whatever the original spot was yeah but it usually surfaces somewhere though it surfaces somewhere but it could have been dumped at any location. So there's, it minimizes, I guess, the where that person could have been dropped sure. from and. Sure, I, I, I get that, but I, I still think that like something then, you know, even if he mm -hmm. surfaced up, you know, oh. miles away, 50 miles away, whatever, like he would still at you some would, point surface up. You would think he would surface up. Yeah. Well, Unless... yeah, I mean, the his hat, his bright red hat, his, yeah. he was wearing a bright red, uh, you know, hat. Um, flannel. Yeah, flannel patterned uh, hat. Um, he had a, a weapon. He had a gun on him. He, you know, he, he was carrying weapons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nothing turned up. Not a single, not a candy wrapper, nothing. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, so then we, the, he, we talk about the geographical clusters, one in particular, which um, the Santa Fe National Forest, which has a cluster of about 59 missing people. Um, Dana, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you froze for a second. <laughs> uh -huh. And they focus on three specific people. The first one being 75-year-old Audrey Kaplan. Um, she uh, had gone into the forest uh, searching for mushrooms with her husband mm -hmm. and uh, become separated. Uh, and thunderstorms happened that night. So the dogs were unable to pick up the scent. Right. Um, so she, as they searched the area and everything, um, camper uh, searchers found, and this was days later, um, searchers found a campsite and um, that had been, you know, and it had been there for a couple of days. And she was found in the fetal position, completely naked uh, and lying on her side in, in a, a creek in a creek bed. Um, the coroner said that it may have been hypothermia, but her body showed no signs of hypothermia. And even though she was found in the creek, he said that she didn't drown. Right. So they declared that she had hypothermia because, you know, she was naked and, you know, but he said that she had no signs. Her body showed no physical signs of hypothermia. Right. Mm -hmm. And what so, time of the year was that? Was that it was in, in in summer? Right. Yeah, I guess it's still kind of gets cold at night in some places, but it just yeah, seems so fucking odd. They said that at, at one day it got in the in the teens, 
Um, Which is cool. Yeah. But for the most part, it wasn't, it wasn't very cold. It, it, it was, was like, it was July. It was Santa July. Fe. Oh yeah. It's fucking hot as balls. Okay. Then hypothermia. I don't know. I mean, at night in a, in a, you know, I think it was like a dry forest or something. Up in Santa Fe, sure. like a goddamn desert, isn't it? I never well, they were the- looking, they went mushroom hunting. Yeah. So it must have been like a, a foresty. It area. snows out there, so I know it gets cold. Not in July, though, I wouldn't think. No, I would think not. And also, how innocent is it to go mushroom hunting with your boyfriend? I don't, I don't know what to do about it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, how I, I said, how innocent is it to just like go mushroom hunting with your boyfriend? Like, you know what I mean? Like, or your husband or whoever he was to her. Mm-hmm. Like, her husband, she was 75. Oh my God. But like how innocent, like, you're just like, what a like little fairy life. You know what I mean? To just like, I'm going to go mushroom hunting and go pick like foraging in the forest and then to like die in such a tragic way, you know? What's your theory on her? I I don't, I don't think she died of hypothermia. Cindy? That one's a strange one. I'm going to chuck it up to weirdness. I mean, just overall, just, you know, it could be fear in the forest, you know, getting lost. Okay, hear me out. But it's so strange. They were mushroom hunting, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe she got got a bad mushroom. She was camping, clearly, because they found a little campsite. And um, she ate a bad mushroom that tripped her the fuck out. Yeah, but wouldn't they be able to detect that in the autopsy? Mm-hmm. I don't and know. I don't think and it was those kind know. of mushrooms babe what'd you say I don't think it was those kind of mushrooms no I know but you know how like sometimes you pick mushrooms and you know maybe they're they're not the correct ones if you're not a, an experienced mushroom picker kind of like uh our friend uh a man almost <laughs> killed herself <laughs> and man is a nurse practitioner for god's sakes yeah should have known better <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking eat I really don't eat like almost anything from the forest and I like to be in the forest and I'm like I ain't that but she I would is. think most people who are foraging for mushrooms either don't eat them or are pretty like that's not a thing you just like do without some pretty decent knowledge about what you're doing you know mm-hmm. And almost all of them, I mean, I mean, I would, it would stand to reason like 99% of them, you can at least touch, you know, I don't think there's any that you just can't like touch even. So like, and I think that if she was poisoned herself or ate something weird or had a heart attack or, you know, injured herself in a way, like it would have showed in an autopsy. Like there's no way, no reason that like, we shouldn't have been able to find a reason that why this person died. I mean, for real, there that at the very least should have been detectable, right? Or you would assume, right? You would assume. Well, there was another guy, sixty-one-year-old mm-hmm. Mel Nadell. Mm-hmm. He was a hunter out with coworkers and friends, and he disappeared in the Elk Mountains, same area, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Mel had just had a knee injury the day before he stepped in a gopher hole and he injured his knee so he couldn't um he becomes separated with his friends because he couldn't hike up with them so he stayed slightly behind to hunt the lower area while his friends went higher up the mountain so when his friends returned back from the hunt they realized that the jeep and everything else that that mel had um was there but he has gone missing And once again, they bring in tracking dogs and the dogs can't find him past the point where he was last seen and none of his weapons or belongings were ever found, even though he was carrying a crossbow and a gun. So then there was that. And a crossbow is fucking huge. Yeah. And heavy. And heavy. Right. And a gun is is big and heavy and like for them to not find any of this is what i'm saying like what the fuck is going on right right somebody's collecting some equipment well and they're so far apart from each other 
that like makes it odd you know like it makes it odd like you almost can't you you can't even be like oh maybe it's a serial killer and they're taking their equipment and blah 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 like right that's doesn't make sense you know right right and now help me out with this one cindy um I'm, I'm confused whether, because then another man, Stanley Vigil, disappears in Barbilla's Peak. Um, so was he the one that later was found, his body was found, or was that still Mel? No, that was, um, so hold on, let me put, uh, Vigil, 2017, 10 miles from Nadell, chased a deer, then some weird fog and weather appeared out of nowhere and then okay, he yeah. disappeared. Later, his body, skull, and uh, his later his body would be found. Skull and r- ribs would be broken. And according to this, they say presumably drowned. Right. So, yeah, so I was thinking, um, so back to Mel, some of the theories with his disappearance is that since they're in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, the whole Roswell territory comes into play Mm -hmm. and people like to think that he was abducted because of, you know, they're in Roswell territory, you know. And uh, so Stanley Vigil disappears, like Cindy says, he shoots shoots a deer and a fog rolls in the area and he goes missing. Um, Dogs are brought in and they can't pick up the scent naturally because it has rained and, you know, maybe that that scatters their scent or something. Helicopters Mm -hmm. can't see him anywhere. Trackers can't find him. Five months later, a cop and his son are fishing and they find his body. And like Cindy said, he had um, broken ribs and skull injuries. um, And he presumed to have drowned nine miles away from where he went missing. Um, The problem is that he owned a GPS device and he didn't take it with him. He left it in the car. I think that was Nadell. That was Nadell. Okay, so that was Nadell. Yeah, all right. So I had those two confused. Nadell had... um, the GPS device and he left it in the car instead of Mm -hmm. taking it with him. But, you know, he just disappeared poof out of nowhere. But he was literally just going like it, it, the field that they showed was the field that he was on, literally on. That looked like an open field and maybe he walked a few feet into where the woods are, which didn't feel like he would need a GPS to walk a few feet out of the woods back to the because it looked like a very open space. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so I guess it, he wasn't. It. Yeah, he wasn't even traveling that far. Like he wouldn't have needed it, really, right? Right. right. But, but let's say that he saw a freaking ten-point buck and he shot at it, and then he injured it, and he goes to chase it. Exactly. But that you know was vigil that was chasing the deer. Yeah, but I'm saying that could have happened with Mel too. You know what I mean? I guess. Right. Yeah. So um, then we go to another area where there's like a big, you know, uh, a a big uh, missing uh, group of missing people. Aaron Hedges goes missing in the crazies. Hodge, I thought Hodge. But even before then, they start talking about the packing list that you should have. Oh yeah, so what's the packing list? So they talked about having your ID, your hunting ID, your GPS, your knife, water, a snack, a trash bag, even so that you can use it as a trash bag or use it as, you know, water stuff. Are you? That's a, if, when he said that, I was like, yeah, that's such a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell people where you're going. Check the weather, of course. A fire starter and something bright. So they mentioned like these things that you you twist and turn and whatever, and it creates like a, a halo of brightness around you so that they can find you. So these are just some things that they say they recommend as your packing list. A satellite phone too. It ain't nobody got money for satellite phones, but (laughs) GPS, but the GPS tracker alone should be helpful. Also a whistle. I I found Mm -hmm. that very helpful. That, that whistle would have come in real handy. Mm -hmm. You know, so now So now we get into the crazies in Montana. Yes. Right. So Aaron Hodges, is it Hodges? Sometimes my, my, I got Hodges, but 
Dana, okay. what were you gonna try to say? I was gonna say that like um some of these people that I guess we haven't really even talked about was like that they had um we were talking about satellite phones, but they had like walkie talkies where they were all on the same channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they weren't like oh yeah, we didn't mention that. Fine with yeah. them. Like like that doesn't like make like add up for me, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden their walkie talkies are gone too. Yeah. But anyway, when go they ahead. don't even use them. Right. What? We have four minutes left. Oh, oh shoot. Um, so. you know, what's what's your theory on Mel and um and Sally? In the Santa Fe cluster? Yeah. What's your theory on Mel? Is that I'm the one that who broke his ribs and his skull? No, that's the one that went poof, gone. Oh, oh. See, the ones that totally disappear, I have less thoughts on. Like the guy who breaks his, you know, you, they find his body or whatever, you're like, um, okay, I could see how this person slipped and fell in a rock quarry or something like this. And, you know, that makes sense. Maybe his like injuries like lead up to that or, you know, add up to that. But when they're, when they're full ass bodies and all their equipment disappears, like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't have theories on that. Like, what do you think? I think, um, I think somebody, and I think the same thing for Tom, I think somebody, you know, another hunter like their equipment pulled up uh, or aside them and, you know, get, get in the fucking car and then stole their shit and killed them somewhere else. Why else would the dogs stop right where they stood? problem is that they would have to walk into where like it's not like the car's right there they would literally have to go in grab get them have them walk back out because even and even in that point if you look at the way the layout was for tom tom was at the top so he would have had to walk past the other two hunters that he was on the side of to get back to the trail yeah you're right damn it and that was the thing too like when they're the people who like did the investigations they fucking have these maps and they're like the wind came in from this way and this thing came, and like it's not like somebody hasn't deeply 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 thought about what the fuck went on here you know like yeah. these people have thought about this shit till the you know it's consumed their lives so like the fuck you know like right. in, in that santa fe area i think the cluster in that like little tiny area was 15 in that little area i think it, as a whole it was more but just in that tiny area where those three disappeared he only spoke of three that were just in that tiny spot of the 15 right. mm. yeah but it was like 59 plus or something in that whole forest or whatever um mm -hmm. When when we come back, uh, we'll talk about Aaron Hedges. Okay. Hodges. We're back. <laughs> All right. All so, right. Aaron, um, Aaron, let's get on. To Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, freaking goes missing in the crazies, um, and he was kind of young. He looked like he was like in his thirties yeah now this one's um, in montana okay um the crazy mountains are the youngest mountain range right yep um it is believed to be cursed by the crow indians and the curse is said to the for the wind to blow and drive the white man crazy and honestly i'm here for it <laughs> yeah 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 it makes so sense Aaron goes <laughs> just makes sense they they cursed it because they were uh driven away from the area right so you know aaron goes in with his friends on two horses and a mule um the mule starts bucking and runs off with aaron's comp camping equipment that was on the mule right mm -hmm. they have a what they call a horse wreck and it was three horses and the mule while and so they end up collecting the mule getting everything back together and they end up go, getting to their location right but um aaron still didn't have his camping equipment but aaron was familiar with the area and what he was familiar with doing he used to go there a lot so he would hide caches 
um, throughout the forest because he was prepared for any type of situation. If he right. was if he was going to be separated, he knew that he had little extra stuff stored, you know? Right. So, um, so because all his camping equipment was gone, he told his friends that he would go and get what he needed from one of the, one of these stored caches, you know? So he left to go get his cash and come back to his friend's campsite. And he was the one that had a walkie talkie on him and a GPS. And his friends call him on his walkie talkie and see his jippy jippus is way off track because what happened was there was like a fork in, you know, where he came to, to two lanes, right? The, the, the road, uh, cuts off. And so he was supposed to make a left and instead he made a right. And, uh, so his friends were like, okay, he's experienced. He knows this fucking area you know through and through and so they were like all right he's the next day he's missing they didn't report it but here's the thing i don't understand why he wasn't responding to them you know on the walkie-talkie because he was abducted by alien so the next day there's um well not the next day but the next day after that there's a snowstorm I'm not gonna. Yeah, pay a fucking gigantic area. snowstorm like the yes. biggest like when they were talking about the snowstorm i was like are these people out of their fucking minds? Like, uh-huh. to be, wh- what? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Like, what'd they say? Like 24 inches of snow in 12 hours or something like that. Is that what they said, Cindy? I don't remember that. I don't remember any of that, but- uh, said 18, 18 to 24 inches of snow in 12 hours, which I fucking hate the snow. Like that shit was like scary as, like, I was just thinking like, the the amount of snow that would have to fall in that amount of time like how big yeah. like it would be it would be why would you ever be outside if that was even coming within the next week you know right and they were supposed to be there for a whole week oh fuck no it, i was like yeah. what the fuck is going on because mm-hmm. like at that point like if you're lost if you're lost even if even an experienced hiker hunter camper whatever if you're lost and you don't have like i mean i don't even know i mean i guess you can i mean i shouldn't say i guess you can camp in the snow if you have the proper equipment right hey why the fuck would you ever want to and that's like my white ass saying like what the fuck and b that amount of snow like if you don't have the exact right amount of food water like you're dead you'll die like right you fucking die and like that's not even like a little bit like of something that somebody who's experienced would take a chance of doing you know right cindy what time of year was it Uh, i do not have that i have the year uh okay no i have the year that's all i have yeah i don't know okay so so it didn't look like I mean, he was wearing a light jacket, you know what I mean? He wasn't wearing like heavy winter clothes. So I think this was like, uh, one of those things that happened in the mountains. You know what I mean? When you're in the mountains, that it's just like a freak snowstorm. Anyway, um, Montana. Yeah. I've been to Montana and I've been, so I went into the mountains in Montana and at the top, it was all full snow. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We drove back down and I was in a sleeveless shirt. Right. So right. I and this was up. like oh. mid to end of April. It was the end of April. I mean, like, yeah, mountain tops are covered in snow. Like, obviously we get like, I mean, I get that, but like mm-hmm. that's, does it, that wasn't my impression of where they were. It didn't look like that. Also though, if if it was drivable or anything like that then they why would they have horses with them and a mule to carry all their equipment so it must it definitely was in an isol wherever they were going was definitely isolated and then if you remember some of the pictures and views of that trail that they were on was very steep and very treacherous in um, some of those areas missing- he um th- this was in september okay okay yeah so this was sept- uh early september september the trip started september 3rd um 
Yeah. And that area will have snow at those time of year, that time of year. And it could Even, come. Yeah. And, and you, you do have a point if they were at a point where they couldn't have their car that they were like on fucking horseback and shit. Yeah. They were probably like up in some, you know, maybe. Uh, okay, fine. But still, I think that's mentally it was insane. ill. Yeah. I think it's mentally ill. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, insane. okay. So he, um, so the snowstorm and the authorities aren't called until a couple days later. So his friends don't call the authorities. Um, uh, uh, scent dogs find his boots uh, and some other items near a rock bench. So mm-hmm. a rock formation, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and his boots are like side by side, like they were purposely sat there like that. They weren't strewn across, you know, like if he was attacked. Right, right. They were just like placed there, like you took them off on purpose. Right. Mm-hmm. They find um, a water a water bladder mm-hmm. and his boots and I forget what else they found. A fire pit. Yes. Okay. So, um, but no sign of him. And now it's like, it's, it, has, it has snowed. There's 24 inches of snow on the ground and he doesn't have his boots on. Oh, he, they found, this is what they found. They found um, the strap of his like uh thingy um uh what you call it the the pack this thing the, around the, his belt yeah like yes, around his waist around yeah his yes and they said that maybe he was using that as protection for his feet but really that's not much protection because oh, they said wear, the hands for his hands oh for his hands okay so um but that's not much protection because even if he was barefoot without those boots. Um, the area, the rocks were very craggy. And so he would have torn his feet apart, you know? Um, so the, the, the thoughts are that, um, the searchers had all also already checked that area and those boots weren't there. Mm -hmm. They saw none of that. That's the part of this whole thing is like where they're finding things where people have checked and checked and checked again and then they'll go back a fourth or fifth time whatever and then find the body or find their equipment or find what like what 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 are you doing what's happening right. i need more answers this right. is a very frustrating documentary because i i definitely left more confused than i started certainly obviously right mm-hmm. um well they think that he got naked or, you know, took off his boots because he had hypothermia. Right. Um, but the crazy thing is that nine months later, they find his backpack leaning against a tree. It had a gun inside. Um, near that, they found a thermos and a cup and an open energy drink. And so he had food inside his backpack. He had everything that he would have needed to to you know, get himself to survival. And where they found all this stuff was you could see a house. Right. Like just in the distance. So he could could have seen safety. Absolutely. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was snacks and they definitely confirmed it was his because his IDs were in there. Right. Exactly. Which leads me to believe that he did not put it there. You think? I mean, even a person who is hypothermic and not maybe thinking well, I think if they saw safety, they would head towards it. You also, know what I mean? Also, yeah. this was in June. By oh yeah, time. this was months after, months and months after. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so but how this close was, was that to his body? And it was pretty dark far okay uh it, we're talking as a total from when they started from their the original camp to where they find his body it was a total of 11 miles right i remember that that's right, right. so a total um, of 11 miles from uh, the he camp wasn't, to he him. wasn't found until two years later until right. august of 2016 Right. And he, they, so basically this group goes up there and they spot a skull under a tree 
and they find his partially buried remains 11 miles from where he was supposed to be initially. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not partially far buried. from a farm. Yeah, not far from a farm. Partially mm -hmm. buried is what, what intrigued me. Yeah, right. You're right. What intrigued me is that they never found his feet. Yeah, they never did find his feet. But, you know, critters could have taken that. Yeah. You know. Um, I guess uh, it would it would be it would be interesting to see how the feet were removed. That is true. You know, is there like animal bites? Is it like a severed thing? Is there saw marks? Like what the, what's happening there? Right. Especially since his boots were found separate without his shit. It's weird that his feet are missing. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like his boots were found and his hands were missing or like, you know, it's just, it is kind of like a weird what's happening there what's going on what are you saying right mm -hmm. right um then th and so we're gonna cut to sonora california the foothills of the sierra um donnell vista oh it was in the donnell vista that's the area i'm sorry mm -hmm. uh where a few people have gone missing breck phelps goes missing in this particular moment and others had gone missing there as well, such as Patty Sue Tol Tolhurst and Nita Mayo. Mm -hmm. uh, these people uh, basically left everything in their cars except for their cameras. So they went to go take pictures, sightsee or something, you know, and um, they went missing three. So these three people went missing in the same spot over a period of 11 years no remains were ever found. Um, and even though human remains were later found during the searches and everything, um, those, those were never identified. So do you have, you guys have anything to say about Sonora, California? Um, not a lot. There, so they even say, so there's a, a very, there's an overlook, which is over, which is a very dangerous spot. It right. looked like a very dangerous spot. But still, even then, they could probably have a helicopter go out and look and see if there's like remains hanging off the sides of the area. So you would think that that would be possible. So the fact that they just went poof, gone again in that area. And they made it, made it known in the documentary that it wasn't far, it's not far from... Uh, Yosemite, I, I don't say Yosemite. Yosemite. Yosemite, that's it. Right. Uh, which has the largest cluster of missing people in every sense of the world. Right. right. So but that, Yosemite, Yosemite National Park is fucking humongous. Right. right. I mean, it's fucking humongous. Right. But, the, but the, these three missing people were not far from the actual spot in Yosemite that they say right. people missing and Yosemite has the largest population of missing people ever right. going missing. Right. Of all the national so, parks. So this specific thing is what Cindy said. It, it shook her. It shook me too. All right. So Yosemite has the biggest cluster, like Cindy said. Um, and in this specific area called the Sierra camp, which is kind of like a secret camp that, you know, hunters kept on the hush hush because they didn't want it getting ruined by researchers and whatnot. Right. So weird stuff was happening in this area. And I'm talking like strange sounds like animals and, or like a tuning fork or other similar sounds. Right. Like one guy said it sounded like a, a car slam door, you know, um, so they had been going there with their buddies since the 70s, and they had like a lean to that they had built for their hunting purposes. And they would hear these, you know, these things. And it was almost like they were being watched. Uh, no image was ever captured, but they did record the sounds. Uh, they also saw lights in the sky and through the forest, like a beam of light, like one guy describes it as like a lightsaber moving across the um the forest floor so you and this say is something? where yeah this is where the documentary starts to take a turn to the more paranormal sense and right. 
uh, looking at is are these missing people missing people because there is something nefarious in the sense of people other people killing them or right. matching them up or could it be something unex truly unexplainable hmm. right so there was a fire this was explained at the end of the documentary there was a fire in the um in that area and the whole surrounding area except for that one patch of woods burned those those trees were essentially unharmed mm -hmm. that whole campsite was not damaged during the fires of 2018 yeah so that's food for thought mm -hmm. so that leads me to the predator case in lima ohio dana were you saying something uh, no i was i was just thinking like about that fire situation like how the fuck like, and they don't, you know, that's the thing that's frustrating is they don't really offer up a lot of explanation as to like mm -mm. how this is possible, you know? And I don't know yeah. if they do that for like the spooky factor or like the paranormal factor or whatever, but like that was, those were huge fires in 2018. Like that was a massive, massive mm -hmm. forest fire. So like to have this one little section not burn, like what, what do you mean? What kind of like witchy shit you got going on there? That like <laughs> protection spell did you put around on the ground that like didn't make that burn? You know. Well, yeah. if that if those recordings were real recordings, because they do play it for they us, they were spooky. Yeah, they were creepy. They they I did not sleep well. <laughs> no, not. Eh. I, well, here's I what I was running I through the thinking. dark hallway to the bedroom that last night. <laughs> <laughs> here's what i think um like for people who were very very scared they were sure mocking the shit out of that sound like they were copying it sound for sound yeah mm -hmm. but that's like, like a bitch yeah <laughs> that's 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 some dude shit for you because women wouldn't be doing that shit in the woods you know what i mean know. like I would be like, shut the fuck up. What the, what the fuck are you doing? If we don't tempt the fucking like, devil, shut bitch. Up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't toy with the devil, motherfucker. We like we respect that shit. <laughs> they were like, it was like, oh, and they were like, oh, and they, and then the thing was fucking responding. Yeah, that shit was freaky as hell. I was don't like, care yeah, for no. that. No, Even thanks. I was silent during the playing of the recording. No, no. Yeah. I was like, no, you, you don't want to attract them closer. All that no. keeping you safe is one little tree stump. For real, right? <laughs> just, their lean to was literally trees leaning against something. Come on. Now. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> this leads me to the predator case in Lima, Ohio. Right. Uh, Dr. Bruce Maccabee and his wife, Jan, and the 15 acre woods behind their house. Right. So Jan is a hunting aficionado and she's in a little um, uh, a little blind, you know, the, the little deer the blind, yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and she can hear she's high up so she can hear the um, band students practicing at the high school across the way, you know, from uh, at a distance of at least a mile. Right. But she's high up enough where she can hear the practicing fields. And this is rural, rural area. So she can hear that, right? So then all of a sudden she hears no sounds. And she says she saw like a large piece of saran wrap moving through the trees, like a large ape, like yeah. swinging from branch to branch with its arm, with its arms. And then just like that, it disappeared and the sounds returned the forest sounds and the, the band sound. And she kind of like, you know, beat feet out of there and went home. But um, at the same time, so she goes home and her husband receives an email from um, the high school or something saying that the high school students that were on the field at this time doing uh, the band practice saw lights in the sky. And um, suddenly, uh, Jan remembers and she tells her husband, oh, by the way, I saw this, you know, this 
uh, dimensional car this dimensional thing that looked like like I don't know if you saw the predator but I saw the predator so I know what exactly why yeah, they call so it looked it. like a prism like some invisible not invisible object where like the vision the line of vision is distorted so it looked kind of like a blob of see-through material or something swinging right, through yeah. them. Mm -hmm. and that was at the same time that she um that the students saw lights in the sky so which leads to the whole paranormal explanation of why maybe you know people are missing pray. i yeah. would say that when all of the sound goes away i've watched enough movies to know mm. that when all of the sound goes away you in danger, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, nah, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nah. Um, that usually happens during a hurricane. Like when we're, right. I've mm -hmm. been in Puerto in Rico during eye. a hurricane. I've been in Puerto Rico during a hurricane and Puerto Rico is a loud ass place. Not just like from the, the people from, but from nature, a lot mm -hmm. of crickets, a lot of birds, you hear, you know, you hear constant like animal sounds and during a hurricane, right before the storm is coming, silence. Yeah. Or even then, in the eye, when you're, when the eye is coming over, it's silent. There yeah, was and this it comes in. I do want to say one thing. So I live not even a mile away from the high, the old high school. And I remember hearing them practicing from my house, like not even a mile away. I could hear the band playing very clearly mm -hmm. and practicing. Okay. So that's possible. Oh yeah. 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 I yeah, absolutely. I, I would I would think probably even further than a mile, you know, yeah. in, in a rural area where there's not a lot of traffic and whatever. Like yeah. I would I would say it probably stands to reason you can hear it pretty really far, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. especially more elevated you are, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what was interesting to me about that is that like this particular part of the case is that she seemed like it deleted her memory until it was jogged later. Like yeah. she, she didn't remember taking a picture. She didn't remember that it even had happened until she read the email or, you know, her husband read the email and it seemed like, like, what, what, what do you mean? Like, I, you would think if you saw some spooky ass shit like that and the way she's describing it, like sounds like a Spider-Man villain, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, the way it's like morphing and shaping and then the way the kids describe what they saw that it was like um like it didn't have edges or shapes and it was like constantly changing and moving you know it made it seem like they had seen the same thing although she didn't mention like a bright light or anything no so like, no no no, no. Uh, if you ever watch the predator movie if you ever get the opportunity to watch it I promise you what they showed as the description is exactly like the Predator movie. Like how the Predator is when he's in like incognito form. So do you think that everybody's, this is not like a valid thing? Oh, I, you know what? If there was something strange and there was lights above the high school in front of all those people, that's something verifiable by just talking to more than just one person and uh, you know based on 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 the documentary they only talked to the one student um that had and and I believe he was the one same one that had sent the email to his grandparents because it wasn't it it's the grandchild of the of what, the of the the, the, the woman who was in the blind yeah oh I thought I don't know I, I don't know why I thought like a mass email went out no, I thought it was an email from their their grandchild or kid that yeah. was. Oh, yeah, okay. it was the grandchild. Mm -hmm. But there was like forty people at the band practice. It was like, right. and that's why I said it's like verifiable. Right. Yeah. It would have asked other people about it. It would have been interesting for the documentary had they talked to a couple more students. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. and there was they described it as an uh, an orange light, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in the way they were like saying that it like hovered just above the tree line that it would have been too low low. if it was like an aircraft of some sort. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know. That shit's weird. weird. So what did, what did, what did you what did you gather from this whole documentary? What is your deal? Like, what do you think the point of this documentary was? Alien abductions, I think. I think they don't say it though. Like they, no. they they dance around it the whole time. You're like, say the thing though. Say the mm-hmm. thing though. But see, that's what makes it fun. I think for me because it's almost like write your own adventure. Like where you <laughs> you come up with a theory and you run with that shit. You know but the whole documentary itself from the beginning did not give you that whole this is an extraterrestrial thing until the very very end I mean the whole thing was like this person's missing these are the circumstances right Right. they didn't give you any kind of leads or ideas until the very end where they like by the way this also happens but but let's tie it all together in the beginning, Tom Messick's friend said that he heard some weird out of nature sounds mm-hmm. and almost like a trap door. You know what I mean? Right. So for so, me, that also could be somebody has like a hatch somewhere there where they like snatch people up, suck them down stairs into like this like lair, uh, s- lair you know, or like... Um, like a like a wartime you know secure place you know bunker jesus christ could you imagine if like the native americans laid traps out there for the white men and um and they're fucking working (laughs) (laughs) because you know i i kept thinking um about the case that i did over the pandemic of the people that went missing in the uh, the triangle in Vermont. I can't think of the name of it. Um, mm-hmm. The yes. Barrington or whatever triangle. Bennington. And, it's a Bennington. Yeah, the Bennington. Yeah, the Bennington triangle or whatever. And then I kept thinking about that girl that I don't know if it was you or me that did the case where she just fucking disappeared one morning. Like, so like this shit with is- With a cousin? Yeah, with her cousin's boyfriend or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like- I, That's the case I was thinking of. Yeah, oh, and so it's okay. like this shit is happening like everywhere in the country, right? Like it is mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. So right. like what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. You know? I don't, I don't know. know. What are your theories? What do you guys think? Tell us. Oh, I'd love to know. You yeah, I mean rock people? Huh? <laughs> Do you think there's rock people that are eating? <laughs> it's near rock quarries, so like, it's just so odd that there's like this list of criteria of all of the things, and they all have it. They all have some sort of medical ailment. They all go, you know, like how often are people really getting separated from their groups in giant, you know, like how often is that? When I'm like camping with my friends, like maybe maybe I'll go to the bathroom by myself. Right. But like, I'm not going to fucking trudge off to a cache in the fucking woods to go get like, you know, like that's crazy talk to me. Like that's wild. Was I saying that word wrong the entire time? No, it's cash. Cash, cache. I'm a little fancier than you. So like. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and let's just call it a stash. Yeah, those <laughs> little stash of the woods. Like to me, like, the fact that he had multiple stashes like that right. was right. like, dude, you're out there a lot. <laughs> uh, I actually read something else about him and it was um, their, their, the year, the previous year they had gone camping to the same woods and they, he just went to their old campsite where they had, uh, they had stored some things. Okay. Like sleeping bags and, and things like that, that they, they were going to need. Um, yeah, but I mean, these are people that were coming back a lot and they were trying to avoid that very situation that happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I get it. Yeah. That's it for us. 
that's it. This is this all I got for you. Those that's yep. all the notes. Maybe it was rock people. Maybe it was underground uh, aliens. I, I don't know. <laughs> underground aliens. It's yeah, underground humans just being weird, and then the aliens are above, just sucking them in. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pulling Anything people right out possible. of their boots. You know, maybe he was just standing there on the edge of the water with his boots, and then they just like, and then his just boots just got left there like that, and that's why they Ooh, were like perfectly possible. side by side. Possible. And what they just come came back and brought his corpse and sat it in the you know. No, they were like we're done experimenting. Bloop, drop him yeah, right that's out. Yeah, why of he was sky. eleven miles away. They just like dropped him somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Food. For I don't what? know. I don't know. I I think it scares the shit out of me that people just are like going missing without a trace, like with and, all and of their we shit. We may never know. We may never get answers because that forest fire, that Yosemite's forest fire, it probably took a few bodies with it. I would think absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. However, Lake Mead is it is drying up, and people are finding bodies all over the place in there really you hear about that they found a drum with a body in it somebody shot inside the drum so wait for it so far they found three bodies one of them is definitely foul play wow clothes from the 1970s and 80s they say Mm -hmm. i hope they solve all these goddamn cases man Mm-hmm. well as we keep losing water yeah we'll find out <laughs> well, i don't want to that. <laughs> if you must find a perk i suppose <laughs> yeah Just but saying. not like that anywho so that's it for us we will see you next week no we won't no next we well, we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll, we'll see you we'll see you when we see you don't yes just, yeah we oh, we're gonna get more. two we got two more to go Two okay, more to go, like and if you theory. if you have something you want us to watch, yeah, let us know because we have gone through a gamut of things and we just can't really nail anything down. So, like, if there's like something specific that's not like a thousand episodes, let us know and we'll try to cover. Yeah, a one movie. episode ideally. Yeah. A movie. I like a these movie. Yeah. Ones. yeah, I like these. You, you like this? This? A, yeah. this one was a good one. Yeah, I like this stuff. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for dining with us. See you next month.